Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Rebel, and as always, I gotta give my advisory and my parental warning to you. I tend to cuss like a sailor, and I can also talk like a pervert, so if you ain't into that, exit stage left. You ain't gonna hurt my feelings none, because I know I ain't everybody's cup of tea. So, I'm sitting here midweek, don't know what to do for a damn video, but now I need to give one out. So, I am thinking to myself, what can I do as I sit here looking at my hair in the mirror? And I'm like, why not talk about the hair colors I've used? And go ahead and we'll just rate them out. I can tell you what my worst one was I've ever used to my favorite one I've used. So, without sitting here stalling any longer, let's go ahead and jump into this. I am going to stop the camera. We're going to move one way or another because I'm going to be putting some photos up of the products I have used in the past. I don't have with me anymore. And also, this is not going to be a very long video. I know, for me not have a long video, what the hell's wrong? Um, but I haven't used a whole lot of hair color products, these semi-permanents. I pretty much, I'm a creature of habit and I hate change. <laughs> so once I find something I like, I pretty much stick on it. But there has been a, a couple of flops of like, oh hell no. So I went back to my try to true the one I like the best. So this is my third take on this damn part of the video. I started sneezing, could stop. Restarted, start sneezing, could stop. So I'm like, oh. So hopefully I get through this one without having to turn the damn camera off. And I've also scooted over. So we got room over here for photos. And you get to look at my beautiful tacky gold arrangement here. I know. Who who doesn't love palm trees that are gold-plated? Come on. But I just want to mention a few things about these punky, funky colors. Um, there's several different options when it comes to these type of colors. They are semi-permanent. They typically will wash out after so many washings, um, but they will stain. Even though they wash out, some of the colors, they do stain. And you're kind of stuck with it until you bleach, basically. <laughs> um, the colors usually are, well, about every day of one of them, to be honest. Uh, probably yellow was probably be the one, or any of the pastels, they probably fade out really good. But these really bright colors, they're going to stay your hair. They are going to stay, they will eventually, you know, fade out to, like, pastel colors. But it may not be a pretty pastel when they fade. Also, there is, like... Some that are a gel formula or liquid formula, and some that are a very creamy formula. I tend to go to the ones that are deep conditioning, which are the creamy formulas. The ones that are usually um, the gel formulas, they, they don't do nothing for your hair. All they do, they just deposit the color. And usually, typically, people that do these colors, we have to bleach our hair to get the color. Unless you're a natural, really light blonde, but most of us aren't that way. So we have to bleach our hair. So of course in the bleaching process, you're going to be drying out, damaging your hair. And why I love doing these colors is they're such deep conditioning. You have to leave them on. Most of them say, <coughs> excuse me, an hour. They leave them on for an hour. Uh, but I tend to leave mine on overnight sometimes if I don't have nothing to do. I'll just leave the color on overnight. I'll just wrap it up in like a Walmart bag or, you know, Piggly Wiggly, whatever you got, kind of your grocery bag. Just wrap my hair up in it to keep the color from getting everywhere. And I just leave it on. Like I said, it's a really good conditioning and it makes your hair feel a lot better what after you've bleached and everything. And also a few tips as to coloring. Like I said, you have to bleach your hair. There's no way around it if you've got dark hair. I My hair is almost black naturally. So, of course, I have to bleach. And in turn, like, the first steps in bleaching, like if I start to bleach the first time on my dark hair, I will go orange. And that's okay if you go to an orange color. If it's lighted up, you could do orange colors like that, or you could do reds. They will make both, or that orange tone that's left of your hair will make those two colors stand out. But if you want any other color besides orange or red, you've got to bleach again. If you're getting those orange tones, you really need to get to a, a light yellow or even a yellow for some of the colors. But keep in mind, like for say your hair is yellow in tone after bleaching, 
you go to put a blue in your hair because you want, you know, blue hair, your hair is probably going to be green because yellow and blue make green. So you have to keep that in mind. Whatever tone your hair is, whatever color you're going to put on, it may not always come out the color you think it's going to be. So it needs to be as light of a pale yellow as it can be. For me, I have to do about four bleachings to get it to get to this color to where I can wear about any color. And But I stretch it out. Like this time around, I always start off, first bleach, I put red on. And I'll leave the red on. And I work my way up the color wheel, basically. So the next bleaching I do, I could go... I usually start off at a orange red color, a red that has more orange tones, and then after the second bleach, then I could go to a red that has more blue based tones, so it'd be more of a, a peaky red, and then I could jump down to the next bleaching, which like I said, I have to scatter this out for about a month or a little bit longer, and then the next bleaching I do, then I could go down to peak, and then Pretty much I can do about any color from that point, unless I need to do some spot touching or whatever. But that's a really good way to follow, is to follow the color wheel. Especially if you started off with the color, and you don't want to have to bleach your hair to get the color totally out. Just go to the next color on the color wheel. Go up. For, say, um, your pink. But you want, to do, uh, you want to go to a blue. Well, what you need to do is go from pink to purple, and then you can jump up to a blue. Especially if you go from a peak, like this is what I would do, go from peak, magenta peak, go from a peaky purple, like a plum color, and then your next purple that you put on needs to be a blue-based purple. And then you can jump up to your blues at that point. So that way your hair is stayed to that color you want to go up to. So you just work your way up the color wheel to the color you want. Uh, because if you're like me, I get bored pretty easy with colors, so I like to change. So that's basically what I do. I just work my way up the color wheel, then I don't have to worry about stripping my hair totally out to get to the next color and everything. And also, conditioner is a good thing to have around, especially if it's a white. I don't know if they really make a clear conditioner, but it needs to be a white conditioner, and it can be the cheapest conditioner ever, or you can use an expensive conditioner. But sometimes some of these colors, and I will talk about them as I go along, are really thick in consistency. And sometimes you need the conditioner to dilute that consistency down to be able to get to the hair. Because sometimes they're so thick that they won't even absorb in your hair. It's just way too thick. And plus, you only get so much. So you have to buy like 40 tubes to try to cover your whole head. So you use conditioner to kind of dilute it. And make it stretch a little further. But on the same token, conditioner will dilute down your color. So if you're wanting more of a lighter color, let's say pink. And you have a magenta like this color here. You have a really bright. And you want it to be a little bit toned down. You put conditioner in it. You put it and you watch the color. The color will change. It will go slowly lighter in tone. And you get to the color that you want and put it on your hair. Now, granted, what's in the bowl is not what's going to be your final result of your hair. Don't ever expect whatever you see in that bowl is going to be your result. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's going to be different than what you see. So just keep that in mind also. But those are pretty much my tips for these colors. No, it's not. I'm not done yet. What the hell am I saying? Also, before you go to put these colors on, which, I like I said, I always do color right after I bleach. So after I've washed my hair... And shampooed the bleach out of everything. I do not put any conditioner in. You do not want any conditioner going on your hair. Or any products before you put these colors on. And you want to completely dry your hair. Now some people will leave their hair damp. For my hair it does not want to take the color. I have to completely get it dried first before I can take the color. So I have to dry it. And I lightly brush it. I just try to brush a little bit of the tangles out because at this point your hair, like I said, is pretty damaged. If you're lucky, it's not that damaged because of the bleaching. So I just, I really baby it until I get the color on. And once you get the color on, you leave it on for as long as you want. Then you go to rinse the color. You have to use the coldest water possible to rinse this color out. Especially like for me the first time, whenever I've taken that color out. 
or what's left of the color basically I use the coldest water and after that I don't really care you're supposed to keep on using cold water each time to make the color last longer is basically what it is when your hair is warm gets hot the follicles will open up and that's where the color gets stripped out when your hair is in cold water the follicles don't open and the color stays in so but it's I always do use really extreme cold water whenever I'm rinsing out the product the first time. But then after that, I'm just a regular shower because I'm not going to freeze my ass off doing cold water. So, and it lasts, like I said, I like changing my hair up quite a bit, so I don't mind the quicker fade out. But if you're somebody that doesn't want the quick fade out, you like the color, you want it to last, you're going to have to wash your hair really cold water to keep that color from fading so fast. But it's still going to fade regardless of if you use hot water or cold water, so... But I think that's pretty much all my tips. Oh, no, it's not. I keep on saying that. I think it's all. Then I think it's something. Um, heat tools will strip color as well. I use a lot of heat tools. So a lot of product will strip the color out. So there's a lot of cons, really, to these semi-permanent colors. But then there's a lot of pros. Like I said, you can really you change up your hair. Um, if you're like me, I, lo I love a bunch of colors. So... I like having the option of changing it up and looking different and I don't know I just I like it I guess that's really the only pro for me is I just I like it I just like looking different than everybody else so but I think that that's officially it if I think of something else between me babbling about the ones I've used then I will let you know but that's pretty much everything that I do and I've learned because I've been doing this for a while oh god the first time I officially put one of these semi-permanent colors in my hair was like in 2000. It was either 2000 or 99. I think it was 2000 though. I went red because I had nat naturally sun bleached hair. So I put it all there and I was a redhead for a while. That was the first time I ever experimented with those colors. And then I started doing it regularly when I started doing pinup. So... Like I said, I, I've been around the block when it comes to these colors and bleaching and doing all that. So, But the first color I'm going to start off with is this one here. This is the Ion Color Semi-Permanent Hair Color from Sally's Beauty Supply. It's around $8.30, somewhere in there. Um, they have sales sometimes. So, But this color, I, I haven't used in probably four years, three or four years. It's an okay color, because I'm about to give you the cons of this color. It's very thick. If you have hair longer than mine, you're definitely going to need probably eight or nine boxes of that stuff to cover your hair. Because it takes me about, at the back of the end, my hair was a little bit shorter than what it is now. It took me four boxes to cover my hair. So, other than that, it's a very thick, thick formula that was back then it might have completely changed by now so I can't rule it out but back then when I used it it was a really thick consistency it said it was conditioning on the box I believe but this one was not that conditioning at all so I would always mix a white conditioner with this because it was so thick it wouldn't soak into my hair so I would always mix a conditioner not a whole lot because I didn't want to dilute it down because I always used the red um so I didn't want to completely dilute it down, but I had to do it to get a good consistency to put on my hair. So the the pro is it is cheap. It is readable. I mean, every Sally's has a lot of these colors, and there's several different colors in this Ion. Um, the Ion products itself, like I've used other Ion hair products, are not bad at all. And this one is a bad hair color. Other, I just, I did like the consistency, and it fades really splotchy. It's not a very good fader. <laughs> it just doesn't fade very well. The only color that faded decently was the magenta color that I used, and it faded evenly. But when it came to the red, the red was very splotchy, and it mostly faded down to a, a nasty-looking orangey yellow color. It was not pretty at all, but it was splotchy. Like, I've never seen one splotch out as bad as that one did. So, 
like I said, pros and cons to that one. It does come in like it like used to. I don't know about now, but it used to come in a metal tube, kind of like a um, toothpaste tube, a little bit bigger than that. So it was easy to kind of store, especially if you didn't use it all. It, it had a cap you could screw on it and it'd be fine. Which, by the way, that's another thing. These colors, you're able to keep. I don't know how long exactly their shelf lives are. I guess till they dry out. But you are able to keep them. They, they don't expire. You know, if you mix a box dye, you can only use it that time that it's over with. Because you mix, mix chemicals. These dyes don't have those chemicals. So, yeah, you could keep them on the shelf for a while if you don't use it up. So, that's another thing I wanted to talk about. But anyways, the next color here is Arctic Fox. You can get this at Ulta, Sally's. They have a website. Um, Amazon has it. And it's around $17 to $18. They do have two sizes to Arctic Fox. This one is the larger size, and they're the ones that are 18 and you can get a smaller 4-ounce size that's around $10. For me personally, the 4-ounce didn't do shit. It didn't cover nothing because it's not very much. Now, if you're doing a lot of colors in your hair like this, then the 4-ounce ones would work fine. But if you're trying to cover your whole head, then you're going to need the larger. It larger would be the way to go. Um, this was my ride and die bitch here. I love Arctic Fox, and I still really like it. The only thing was, it's getting so expensive. It started off being like $14 a bottle, and it's jumped up now to $17, $18, depending on where you find it. Um, but I love this formula. This is the best formula when it comes to conditioning your hair. It's it's so good. It smells so good. Um it's total. I think it is vegan. I can't remember offhand, but I think that this one is vegan, cruelty free, and all that. Um, it ha They've expanded their color range some. There, there was just kind of a, like a primary color in a way, and then there was a few in between. But I think there's more and more colors now. So, and they also even offer a black. You know, that would be a good way to go. I'll tell you, I, I'm the stupid one. Like I said, my hair is extremely dark brown. I'm, I'm pegging on black, really, as dark as my hair is. Um, so what do I do? I use box hair dye black, <laughs> and I'll put on my hair whenever I do go back to natural because I don't like when my hair gets sun bleached out. It goes to this funky orangey, and I just don't like it. So I'll use box dyes about every four months or whenever I need it to refresh my color. And keep that sun bleach away. And box the back the black box dyes are the worst and the hardest to get out when it comes to bleaching. So that's what takes me so long with the bleaching process is usually I have the black box dye on my hair. And that's what takes so long. So if you want to go black, it's actually better to go with one of these. At least it'll wash out. It you can bleach over it. It's and it'll be easier, way easier to get out with the bleach than what a box dye would. So I would say go with one of those. But anyways, um, it's a very, I, I was a, a thin formula. I would say a thin, kind of watery, but not really formula. I don't have to dilute this down. I could use it the way it is, and it permeates my hair perfect. Um, and my favorite color was uh, Wrath. Wrath was a, oh, it, it's a red but it has the, the blue based. So when it fades, it, it actually fades to a really pretty, like a pinky magenta color because of the blue base that's in it. And I got something in my eye. But um, that was my go to color, was Wrath. And I used that a lot. Uh, once I found this Arctic Fox, that's all I used. And like I said, the only pro or the only con about it is it is going up in price. And 10 ounces, I would normally have to have a bottle and a half to cover my hair. Especially like this past summer when, it, when my hair was longer. I was almost needing two bottles in to cover my hair. So that's expensive. If you got to get two bottles, cover your head. And the only bad part is that this does fade out really quick on me. 
it might have been the color because red is a really fast fade color so it might have been the color of of just being red or it might have been the product i'm not too for sure but i was have to retouch my hair up every about every two weeks to keep the bright red vibrancy if not it would go down to a peak and then after that peak it would go to just a funky kind of a light pinkish orange i don't know how to explain it it was just a really dull color is what it was so i would have to touch up every two weeks and then have to buy a new bottle you know to do that and then when i have to bleach my roots and everything and re-bleach my head then i would have to buy two more bottles to do all that again so this one was getting pretty expensive in the process um so that's why i'm like i have to look around and like i said i was i was using this arctic fox up until probably november of last year of 2020 and i'm like i've got to find something else because this is just getting a little bit expensive really to be ever you know so but i i love arctic fox I think it's really good it, it it works really good and like I said it's super conditioning I do like it but I have found a replacement for it and we will begin to that replacement in a bit so the next color is this one I have used it once is the punky color and you can get it for about um, anywhere from eight to ten dollars depending on where you go like I Sally's has it Ulta has it I've seen it on Amazon. I think Punky Color might have their own website too where they sell, but I did like it. I did not like it at all. Of course, I used the red color. Um, I don't remember what it was called, but this was about four years ago when I used it. And I didn't like it at all. The consistency was... It was kind of thick. It was conditioning. I will give it that. It did condition out. Not as good as Arctic Fox. But it did have some conditioning properties. But it went on splotchy. And I've never had that issue. Like some places. Because I was just doing solid color. Like it was all red. Like I would have spots. To where it looked like I missed. Like it would just barely be tinted a little bit of red. And then others would be bright and vivid. And I totally saturated my hair. So I don't understand why that happened. But it, it, the lasting time was not there. It bled all over my clothes. That's another thing too. It, it would bleed on my clothes or, or my pillowcase. or And this is when it was dry. Because I do make sure, and I've always done this, that my hair is completely dry before I go to bed or before I put something nice on. Because if not, if your hair is still damp or wet, it's going, sometimes, some of the colors will bleed onto your clothing or your bed or your pillowcase or wherever. Um, but not all the brands will do this, but there are some. And this was one of them that it would, and even when it was dry, it would bleed on anything my head would touch. So that was a big no for me, along with the, it faded out really quick of, um, one shampoo later, it was faded really bad. So, no, I I didn't like this color. I've seen mixed reviews about punky colors. Some people love it, and others are like me and can't stand the shit. So, I don't know. Take that as you will. I would just uh, honestly, I would steer clear of this if you want something cheap in that same price range. I would go with the Ion over the punky colors. So. Oh, we got another good one coming up, though, so this other one might top this one. But let's go ahead and just jump into this other one. I got desperate one time. This was four or five years ago. I bought one of these kits from Walmart. It wasn't really a kit, but the Splat hair color. I bought one of those. The worst decision I made in my life. <laughs> it was horrible. Um, these, like I said, I think they have their own website, and they're sold... At every Walmart, I believe. But they're about $8 for a box. Depending on what you get. I think they have the bleaching kits. They have the ombre kits. And then those go up to like $10, I believe. But I haven't tried. I'm not trying their bleaching shit. Because that would probably kill my hair. But I just tried just this color. Just this color tube. Just to put some temporary color in my hair. And it had to be red because like i said i either did red or regenta back then so it was one of those two and it was just it was horrible 
it was really thick it just I had to mix it with a bunch of conditioner and then by the time I mixed it it was diluted down so it might have been because I had to mix them but it was thicker than toothpaste kind of thick when it came out of that tube and there was no way I was going to be able to get that all over my head and be able to get it to soak into my hair it was not going to happen but the um half of it washed out during the first whenever I was taking the product off and I used like I said I used cold water and it was still half of it washed out and then it just looked horrible especially the second washing it faded to this funky orangey mess of a color and then I was stuck with that I could not once it hit to that point I could not get rid of it then it stained my hair to that funky ass color and I had to wind up just uh, doing a bleach bath to my hair to pull some of that color out. It didn't even pull out all the color. Normally, a bleach bath will pull out this per semi-permanent, or, se yeah, semi, whatever, this hair color. I can't even talk today. We'll pull out this color, and it wouldn't even pull half of that out. So, stay away from the splat. I Like I said, this was five years ago when I used it, but... I just probably think they still have not approved on their colors. I don't see how they could have had approved <laughs> because they're just older Paul Bart. So, no, I would stay away from Splat, even though it is super cheap. Don't use it. That Especially if this is your first time, that will be like the worst experience for getting colored hair. And then you're going to be like cursing the day you even seen me on YouTube talking about colored hair. Because you'll be like, oh, I want hair like Rebel. I want to do that. So I'm going to go to Walmart to get this cheap ass shit. And I'm going to have hair that's so bright and pretty. And then you put that shit on and you'll be like, that fucking bitch, <laughs> she's full of shit. Look at this crap in my hair. So yeah, don't use this as your first time busting your cherry when it comes to bright colors. Don't just stay away from that one. Just stay clear. Okay. I went on the tangents there, didn't I? So I do have this next one. I don't have to put up a picture. So the next one I'm going to talk about is manic panic. Um, here we go. It ain't going to focus. Go freaking figure. So Manic Panic has been around since the Stone Age. There we go. And this was the first color I ever used. Way back in, like I said, the Stone Age. Um, you get this at Sally's. Manic Panic has their own website. Um, Amazon, this is where I've been getting the Manic Panic was off of Amazon. And it ranges anywhere I've seen it from. $11 on Amazon up to, is it $13 at Sally's or $14 at Sally's? So, this consistency is um, a little runny, a little conditioning, you know. Um, it's not super thick, but it's not super thin either. So, you can pretty much go out of this bottle and put it on your hair and it'll be just fine. But... The problem with Manic Panic is it fades super quick. Uh, within two washings, it's already, it's not gone, but you've lost the brightness of your hair with this. Um, but the only good thing about it is I like the container. I know that seems weird, but the brushes I use for my hair fit perfectly in these containers so like when I'm doing colors like mixing several colors all I gotta do is open the containers and then just get like if I'm using three colors just get three different brushes keep the brushes in the container and then I don't have to sit there you know clean do all that you know so granted you can do the same thing in a bowl but this way I'm not wasting it by pouring it in a bowl and then if I have some left over then what the hell am I gonna do with it kind of thing you know because I don't like putting my colors back if I've used I, that's kind of I'm weird <laughs> but I don't like putting them back so I like having the option of just being able to dip in here and Manic Panic has a lot of colors I mean they have a definite rainbow of colors any color you think of they have it um and they're readily available everywhere so I mean th the only negative thing I have to say is the fade out is very fast on this one really fast so if you do use it you're not going to be able to wash your hair very much at all so dry shampoo will be become your best friend I promise your best friend so 
like I said, you can find any color. You can find it anywhere. This would be a good one to start off with. This is four fluid ounces. So, yeah. All I gotta say about that one. And this one is last and final of the colors I've tried. This is what is in my hair now. The four colors, or three. One, two. There's four, sorry. Um, this is new. I haven't seen it until I watched a girl on YouTube about two months ago talking about it. So I'm like, I'll give it a, I'll, I'll look it up. I looked it up on Amazon. It's like $11. I'm like, okay, I could try this stuff. This is four fluid ounces. And this is called Eero Eero. Uh, get it. There we go. It's called Eero Eero. Comes in this strangely weird <laughs> packaging, which this is actually a good idea. You got this nozzle here. So you can basically squeeze this out. If you think of like a like a mac and cheese packet, you know, the where you squeeze the cheese out, this is exactly what it is. So you could get all the product out of this pretty easy. This is the color plum. This is one of the colors that's in my hair now. This is my new go-to. This will be my go-to unless I find something that's a lot better than this. I have no shit. Wash my hair now. This is the sixth time I've washed my hair. It's not, now I'm not saying it's as vibrant as the first time you see this color, but I mean the color is still holding on really good with this. Really good. And like I said, I only wash my hair once in cold water just to rinse out the product. Then after that, I just did regular washings. And I mean, it's still, like the purple has faded out some, especially at the ends. The pink is the only one that's really like keeping it real with the color. But like the orange has faded out some at the ends and the purple has. But other than that, I mean, they're still, this is really good. This is the color that you would give us some of those ones I just mentioned previously after you washed it out the first time. So, um, <clears throat> I'm in love with it. It, it conditions. It is vegan and cruelty free. It's still the best conditioner one is the Arctic Fox. It's the one that also smells the best too if you're into the smells. But for the color, saturation, and lasting this is the one. These, This has been the best one by far i found for that. And their color range is, um, if you go on their website, there's a lot of colors. But like I ordered these off of Amazon because I, I have the Prime so it gets to me the next day kind of thing. They don't have a whole lot of color choices when it comes to Amazon. But another reason I like Amazon is I just ordered two packages of purple, which is the purple I'm using here. They had those marked down to like $8 and something. So I bought two of them as backups. So like I said, they're not going to go bad. Especially if you don't open them, break the seal. They're going to sit around and be just fine. Um, and I've never really looked to see. Like I said, I don't think that they have an expiration date. Oh yeah, they do. Okay, this one says 12 months. So, but I think if you don't break that seal, I think they would go longer than that. But I really, really, really like this hair color for sure. Like I said, the next round I'm going to do, I was hoping by now this would be washed out enough I could do the next color round and do my next color thing I was wanting to do. But I'm, this one's still holding on really good. So I may have to bleach bath this out, um, give it a little bit longer to where my roots are growing out a little bit more to do the bleach bath, bla beach, uh, beach blast. I can't even fucking talk now. The beach, uh, the beach. I give up. I give up. I'm looking over here. I have pictures of a beach and I keep on looking and see that damn beach wishing I was there. The bleach bath. There we go. When I go do my roots and all that shit. I'm so stuck on that. I really want to be at that day, especially last week when we were like negative 10 degrees. I was wanting to be on those damn beaches of Hawaii. I'm looking at over there, so... But anyways, um, best hair color, I would definitely say if you're starting off, go find them. It take about two for this length. My camera just stopped. That's a start. Okay. I told you, I thought this was going to be a short video. I was wrong. Um, but go find you this. Use this. You will absolutely love it. You'll get the best vibrant color and it's going to last a long time. So, 
so far my favorites. Not sponsored, not sponsored. They don't know who the hell I am. So I'm not sponsored by talking about any of these products, so don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm not getting paid for my opinion. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed me talking about hair colors and kind of how to do it in a way. So if you have any more questions, feel free to ask down below and I will gladly either answer them down below or we'll do another video because like I said, I've got out of ideals here. So <laughs> anyways, I hope you have a wonderful day and a week ahead and thank you for watching me. Thank you for subscribing to me and you know, I will see you soon.